Huberto is an international company and we work with clients from all over the world. In eight years, we've participated in more than 300 projects. We're ready to share the expertise we've accumulated, and so we've prepared a series of master classes dealing with our most popular, up-to-minute work. You'll get to see exactly how we brainstorm, where we get our ideas, how we put designs together, and the best for last, how we make animations. We're fans of one-handed interfaces. When an app is designed to be used with just one hand, you probably agree that it's usually inconvenient to use bigger devices with one hand. As an example, I'll tell you about an awesome new concept for an email reader designed in line with our principles. In the master class, we'll make several screens of the application and you'll see that refreshing the list makes new mail appear at the bottom instead of at the top, as usual. In this way, our apps will be easy to use with one hand. So, I'm going to look for inspiration on Dribbble or Behance. But even there, pursuing good ideas gets complicated and takes up a ton of time. Usually, I use Pinterest. The search is precise, and there are design selections from different sources. I gather the most creative solutions and favorited projects into a working sketch file. In the course of my search, I come across ideas for swiping to delete. That's exactly the kind of thing I want to see in my own design concept. For making prototypes, I usually use Sketch or Figma. I make a properly sized artboard. I determine the location for the current section's header and add a search icon. Next, I create an email in the email list. It will have the standard attributes, sender, subject, part of the email's first line, and date. I'm marking some new mail at the bottom as unread, adding filler to the banners. The main point of our interface is that when you refresh incoming mail, the new mail appears on the bottom. That way, the app can be used with one hand. I use an icon I prepped ahead of time to make a tab bar. At this stage, there will be a collection of tabs, but I'm not going to waste time on selecting appropriate icons for all of them. For now, all tabs are going to have one icon. Additionally, I make sure there's an availability of notifications for each section. Each notifier will have its own color. I assume this will make things more streamlined. I smoothly transition to creating the visual style, beginning with selecting a font. This makes a huge difference when working with seamless and clean interfaces like ours. I rarely rely on paid fonts and try to stick to free ones from Google Fonts. This makes both my life and the client's life easier. For the header, I'm going to use the butler typeface with serifs. Now, I'm organizing the mail section. First, I'm changing the typeface to Gotham Pro. Remember, officially, this font doesn't exist. There's only the licensed variant Gotham. If you want to use it for commercial purposes, don't forget to shell out a small fortune for it. The original Gotham is innovative and beautiful, but so far, not a single client has elected to pay for its license. For our concept, Gotham Pro works just fine, especially since it's not intended to further use in production. Worst case scenario, I'll change up the font to a free version. I make the sender more obvious and make it bold. The subject and email body will be distinguished only by color. The email body will be light gray. I've got a tip for you. Say you want to figure out the quality of design and layout. That's easy. Check out the typeface. If the lines are super close together, if it's difficult to tell apart the header from the rest of the text, if the letters are arranged tightly, if there are no accents of color and contrast, you've got a poorly made layout. I use this technique when checking out designers for our own studio. I continue to align pixel indents, optimizing the space between lines. At the design stage, I'm creating each icon for the tab bar from scratch. The icons will be outlined with simple metaphors. The process of icon drawing isn't difficult but it's essential to do it carefully without losing track of the mood you want to create. This icon is for incoming mail. Next to the notification circle, I change up the form a bit to make things more original. Now is the time to put elements in place for deleting mail by swiping. When moving mail from the edge of the screen, a droplet should appear, which becomes the delete icon. Physically speaking, 
This should bring to mind something sticky and pullable. I use minimal color in the layout. I'm applying green for emphasis, but the interface is going to remain minimalist with a light touch so as not to distract the user. Even with such small accents, our interface is easily distinguishable from those we encountered in our research phase, where the color spectrum was mostly blue and gray. I like the result and add small details to the design, avatars and icons in the tab bar. Before animating, let's prepare the file. We need to complete the list so that after deletion, we can see the mail, which didn't make it into the screen. We need to figure out how the scroll will behave and anticipate how it will interact with the other elements. So we're adding a gradient background to the header. Let's draw a simple rectangle beneath the menu, the same color as the background. Now we're switching to After Effects. We can use a plugin to do that, but that will add a bunch of unnecessary layers. In this case, it's quicker to make PNG layers. I group the header, list elements, and menu ahead of time just for this. Each group ends up being a separate PNG piece. We'll display them in two times. We're going to display the entire screen separately to verify the location of the elements. We're transferring our displayed layers to After Effects. We set the entire screen as a base and arrange all the elements on it. We put the header and menu at the top so that none of the layers obstruct it. We take the rectangle and create a background for the screen. We begin animating. First, let's make the list disappear when there's a swipe right. We select the layer, press P to animate the position. We're adding the initial and final keyframe to the timeline and then shifting the layer to the right. Let's also make the layer transparent. Press O, set up the keyframes again, 100% on the left, 0 on the right. Let's make the movement even more exciting and edit the curved bezier. Select keyframe position, click the graph icon. We select the right dot and make it curved, like this. So at first, our layer is going to speed up quickly and then slow down at the end. Let's return to the timeline. We're going to add an effect. When disappearing, our layer will also blur. We need to apply an effect for this. We enter blur into the search box and select Gaussian blur. We create the keyframes for blurring. First with a zero blur, then second with 16. Press function F9 again edit the speed graph. If you don't feel like editing the speed graph every time, then you can set up plugin motion 2 for example. Now we're going to make our animation with liquid. We make the circle shape like it was in the outline. We color it green. We draw a second shape. It's important to keep the shape in one layer, so first, select the layer with a circle, 
Now we're creating motion for the circle. Now the magic happens. We look for the edge, select roughen edges, we blur the edges, put in the fractal to zero. We need to blur here to about 90. We're going to add the levels effect to this layer. Select the alpha channel, change the alpha input black, and we can see how our elements have the effect of liquid and are dissolving between one another. That's the secret. First, the elements are totally blurred, and then they acquire contrast and you get this awesome effect. Let's set these two layers into the composition so that we can put them somewhere else later on. Also, as you can see, this effect makes the edges of the composition smoother. Let's fix it by increasing the composition width so that there's extra space for the edges. We're moving back up now. You can see the sketch of the animation's main effect is ready to go. Just have to finish and polish it up. We need the left shape to roll in from the left and also be a bit stretchy, like gum. We'll add dots of movement to the shape and to get the stretchy effect, we need to add the shape right here. so it has to roll out like the others, and then get narrow. Upon narrowing, the link between the objects will break. We just have to tighten it all up a bit. So, this is what we end up with. The ball moves right, so does the line between objects, while getting more narrow at the same time. And the left shape is also getting a bit deformed too. First, it stretches right, and then, when the link breaks, it deforms in the other direction. Here's how it looks without any effects. Let's check it out on the screen. The animation has come to life and is almost ready. Let's just add a few more details. We're going to add our X to the circle. Press P, Left click and Alt to press the timer. We're pulling the link to the circle shape position. Now the layer with the X duplicates the circle's location, but it's shifted and is exactly where we want it to be. For example, you can move the anchor point so that the X stays in the right place. Let's make it transparent when the circle gets smaller. Let's add one more thing. Let's make a droplet fly between the objects when the link breaks. We make a circle. We set the keyframe position and the circle size. We make the layer begin to appear as soon as the link breaks. We just have to refine it a bit. Let's edit the speed again. So, here's the end result. Now, we just have to add motion to the other elements in the scroller. We select the top item, create keyframes for movement, and make it roll down after deleting animation. One more item has to materialize. We duplicate the layer and shift the dots upward. We're going to make a second male deletion, but in the opposite direction. We 
We duplicate the composition, invert horizontally, we're copying dots to this layer. We just need it to move in the other direction, so we redo it. We copy and arrange these dots onto the layer with background. Turns out we didn't need it after all. We could have done it with one layer. After the second deletion, all the items above also have to shift downward. Let's do that. We can liven up the animation by shifting the dots like this to a keyframe from the previous layer. In our field, the most important thing is the pursuit of excellence. That's why every designer has to improve to create products which are totally original and reflect the latest trends. A designer who works with the same product for many years tends to get into a rut, and it's hard for the designer to compete on the international market, developing products for varying audiences. That's why Cuberto has an expert team of experimental designers, which keep us ahead of the curve with the most innovative solutions.